The S24 Ultra seems to be loved by the YouTuber community and you know what? I get it. It has a great screen, its finish feels premium, it offers the best performance I ever seen in a Samsung phone, and its cameras also have made a leap in quality. But from the title of my video, you already know that this is only part of the equation, and the truth is that I was expecting a lot more. Still, it's a great phone, so let's start with the positive points. Right upon opening its box, I saw this titanium grey color, which I personally love. Not because it has titanium on it, which seems to be the latest trend on phones, but I do like this matte finish. And the fact that it doesn't get smudged with fingerprints is another reason to use it without a case. Well, if you dare. But the design of the cameras is the same. We still have the stylus right here. It also lacks the audio jack or the slot for micro SD cards. But at least, its screen is finally flat. I know a lot of people are really happy about this, but if I'm honest with you, I didn't mind the curved screen. In fact, I think the best thing about this screen is this new anti-glare protection, which yeah, it works quite well actually. And if instead of this one, I show you the S23 FE, you can see how the reflections are not as intense. I've been taking some pictures with the iPhone and the Pixel and this one, it's clearly the best to use outdoors. Now, it's really funny because I remember the first time that I pick up the phone and I look at that screen and I said, damn, these colors are quite neutral. I really liked it. And it turns out that it was due to a bug. Because if we switch between vivid and natural mode, the difference is minimal, as you can see. But on the S23 FE, this difference is much more noticeable. Really, if you see them side by side with the same image, it's impossible not to notice the difference. Personally, I don't mind this natural tone, but I do understand that this is clearly a mistake. And Samsung, well, it wouldn't lose anything by giving us more options right here. But at the same time, well, come on. Don't tell me that if you looked at this screen, you would say that it's a low quality one. Another positive thing about this phone is that its performance, it's great, and everything just feels fast. Screen unlocking, it's super fast. System navigation, it's very fluid. And thanks to its processor, you will be able to run any game without any problem. I've made another video that you can see right here talking a little bit more about the performance of the processor and comparing with previous generation. But in this review, I just wanna tell you the most important information about the S24 Ultra. In benchmarks, you can see here that it gives us impressive results and only the Red Magic 9 Pro surpasses it. But then, if we start opening and closing apps as I always do, you can see how the Galaxy S24 Ultra is faster than the Red Magic, the Pixel, and even the OnePlus 12. I don't know what they have done this year with the system, but in terms of performance, this phone has everything. I mean, they kept the same battery, 5000 mAh, but the results with PC Mark? They're great. And to end this section, I just want to mention that this phone also gets 7 years of updates, which in the Android world? It's great, it's the best, even better than Google with the pixels. But let's move on to the most interesting part of this video and probably the main reason why many of you clicked on it, the negative points. If you've noticed, I already mentioned some of them, such as the lack of audio jack, the slot for micro SD cards, or even the screen calibration error. But those are not as important as the fact that this phone continues to be quite heavy, and even more so if you put a case on it. Or the fact that despite having significantly improved of the heat dissipation inside, as you can see in this table, it still suffers for exaggerating throttling over time, losing 40% of its performance in 20 benchmark laps. I understand that this is a somewhat difficult problem to solve, but at the same time, why do I need the best processor if I can only use it to its maximum for two minutes? You might say that this is an investment to the future, you know, but does that investment cost $400 more when compared to the S23 Ultra? Another problem I see, it's related to its charging speed of only 45 watts. Yes, it may be better for the lifespan of the battery, but at the same time, just let the user choose, you know, how they wanna charge the battery. Just give them the options and remember, this is one of the only few things that Samsung can clearly improve on the hardware of the S24 Ultra. But now let's finally talk about the artificial intelligence that Samsung, you know, promoted quite heavily during the presentation. If you go to the phone settings right here, you'll find this menu that details all the new features with AI. And if I'm honest with you, well, 
some of them are quite cool, like this translator integrated into the keyboard or this that improves the style of the message we write. We can also translate certain web pages from the browser and then summarize the content to then translate it once more. Then in its notes app, we can do several things like automatic formatting, which give us different styles. The only problem with all of this is that they're integrated into apps that I don't usually use. You know, like the keyboard, I usually use the Gboard. For browsing, Brave. And for notes, Notion. Besides that, the only two settings that I really, really like is the one to adapt our wallpaper to the outside weather and the one to make any video in slow motion just by holding down the screen. Besides this, there are other ones that are not exclusive to Samsung and that we already have on pixels, like the transcriptions from the recording app, the chance to remove an object from a photo or simply change the position and size, or even just to make a circle on whatever we're looking at the screen in order to do a search on the web. I mean, don't get me wrong, I really like that they have integrated all of these functions, but I don't think they should be exclusive for the top models, okay? Some of them do require internet connection, and the worst part of all is that some of these functions will be paid starting 2025. And you know, when you're paying $1,300 for a phone, you do expect that it should be the best, especially in the Android world. But just like what happened with the S23 Ultra, this is not the best phone you can get. It is not. However, one thing that I can tell you is that at least in the camera department, it has improved a lot. During these days, I've been taking some photos with the Pixel and the iPhone, and although there are moments when its algorithm completely messed up, in most of the photos, the results obtained has been quite positive. And I think they have finally found a balance between the realism of the Pixel and the overexposure and saturation that now plagues the iPhone. Also, in its front camera, although its skin tone can be improved, but its new telephoto being 5X, no longer has the advantage it had and it's wide angle, it's decent, but in macro photos is the worst of the three. Basically, it's a good camera overall, but in my opinion, it still lags behind the pixel in some occasions. Now in video section, I still want to do more tests, but the results in general are quite good as you would expect. The only thing they can clearly improve is the overexposure control, which you can see how in several clips it tends to increase too much. In this recording, you can see how it looks too bright in such a way that it loses some details of the trees, something that we can still see when we see the pixel. Perhaps from this perspective, you can see a little bit better what I mean. But notice how in the same recording, in an instant, it considerably improved its contrast, lowered the exposure, and in general, it gave us a much better balanced results, just like the others. Still, it's not as consistent as the iPhone or the Pixel, and you might think that this is due to the position of the front camera, but if I change it, well, you can see that this is the result I get. Having said all this, the main reason why the S24 Ultra does not surprise me anymore, it's because I'm feeling like Samsung is trying to copy Apple in this little by little improvements every generation. If you notice, the screen is a little bit better. The design is a bit more refined and in performance, well, the same happens. But we still have the same fast charging, the same throttling problems, and even the cameras are lagging behind the pixel when for this price, they should be the best of the best. There is no doubt that this is a good phone, but for $1,300, it should be the best on Android and it is not. It's happening the same thing that happened with the S23 Ultra that I would only recommend you buying it if you can get it in a promotion or you just wait a little bit, you know, until it drops to around $1,000. If not, I would say look at the S23 Ultra or the OnePlus 12 that I try in January and it blew my mind. I do think that price, performance, everything you get it's a much better value than the S24 Ultra. But anyway, that's just my opinion. And if you have a different one or a question about this phone, you can leave it in the comments. I see you in the next one. Ciao, ciao.